Welcome. How are you this evening? How are you? Are we good? So it's the night before Halloween. Woo! It's two nights before All Saints Day. Woo! We're glad you're here. So there's two things every Wednesday night we want to do. First one is that we want you to have a profound experience of God. The second thing is that we want you to be inspired to live the greatest possible life you could live. To really live the life that your soul came to live. And so our job is to support you in both those places. And if we do that, we feel like we are very successful. So we're glad you're here tonight. Are you ready to get started? Okay, you ready for the opening statement? Is it there? I love it when it works. You ready? Our opening statement for tonight is, I go deeper into God. Is that what it says? Great, I love it. I go deeper into God. This is the conclusion of about a two-month process we've been doing on going deeper. And so tonight, it's all about going deeper into God. And so I'd like you to say it with me one more time as we go into our, our, our opening prayer. Together, I go deeper into God. So we open our minds, our hearts, our souls as we go deeper into God. Deeper into the infinite presence and power and love and life that God is in us. That there's one presence and one power. God the good, omnipotent. And that living life force, that holy of holies, that glory of God is the very essence of who we are. And tonight we move our attention inward and we touch the Holy of Holies and know that we are one with all that God is. And so it is. Amen. Okay, our church mission statement, let's affirm that together. Unity of Phoenix is a loving spiritual community that welcomes all people and honors all paths to God. We are dedicated to transforming lives by inspiring and awakening one another to discover God's spirit within them. This is the time when we prepare for our time of meditation, and Rusty's going to come up and lead us in our song. And if you haven't already, this is a good time to turn off your cell phone and all the electronic devices that beep. And let's just go into this time of really just experiencing our oneness with God. you just take a big breath. Let it fill your lungs. Let it expand your chest. And then when you're ready, I want you to exhale completely. And tonight really is about going deeper. About going deeper into yourself and going deeper into your God. And to ask the question, where am I ready for more God in my life? Where am I ready to be more blessed? Where am I ready for my mind and my thoughts to expand to a higher level of good? Where in my life am I ready to walk in more grace? Where in my world 
Am I ready to be more at peace? So take another deep breath. As you exhale this time. Let your soul know a greater reality. Let your soul know a deeper connection with the divine. where we are always one with God. But as that knowingness, as we become into that conscious realization of our oneness with God, it changes everything. To know God. To know God deeply, profoundly. To know that there is only one, one presence, one power expressing through me. That I am God's beloved. That I am sacred and whole. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I am ready for more God. I am ready to feel God in a deeper, more profound way than I ever have before. I'm willing to let go of the confusion and the chaos of the past. And know the still small voice as my essence, as my truth, as my sacred self. creating me in your image and in your likeness. Thank you, God, that we are one. That what you are, I am. That whatever I need, whatever's going on in my life, that you are my source. You are my infinite good. And when I am fearful and afraid, I open my heart to feel your holy presence all around me. So tonight I give thanks. And I know the truth, and the truth will set me free. So we pray for all the names on our prayer list. We pray for this ministry and the leadership of this ministry. We pray for our world. And we pray for peace for all mankind. So in all things, we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.
There are days so hard, it seems like nothing's going right. There are nights so cold, you're just praying for the light. There are times when you think that there's no going on. You're convinced that you're not that strong. But just then, a day like this comes along so celebrate your life today great and joyful things have come your way love with all to celebrate. You can lose your way even when you're sure which way to go. So why wait to appreciate what you have now? You already understand how. You just open your eyes and heart as wide as they're alive. And 
Rusty, what a home run. Was that a home run? Well done, Rusty. Guys, thank you, Craig. Fabulous. Guys, thank you, thank you. Good job. Okay, so for the last two months, we've been talking about going deeper. And we've, been, and we've gotten deeper in, into resistance. We've gone deeper into trust. We've gone deeper into the silence. We've gone deeper into our fears. We've gone deeper. And tonight, what I want to close up the series based on going deeper into God. And to ask you the question, where in your life would you be willing to go deeper into your experience of God? Because in reality, you really can't go deeper into God, right? Because God is everywhere present, true? So if God is everywhere present, there is no up or down, there's no in or out. We're, we're always there, right? But we can absolutely go deeper in our experience of God, our conscious awareness of God, the, the, the thoughts, the ideas that we, in, that we invite ourselves into God. And so tonight what I really want you to look at is where in your life would you be willing to make more room for God, to really have a deeper, more profound relationship with God. Because there's something both powerful and scary about intimacy. Like our soul craves it and we fear it at the same time. The thing that we want the most is that knowing our oneness but it's also a little frightening to open doors and aspects of ourselves and say, what if I really invited God into that area of my life, into that situation, into that moment? So tonight, that's what we're going to do. And I want to start with a scripture. And this scripture I just love. And it's in, from John 16, and I read from verse 12 and 13. This is Jesus speaking. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And I love this. Can I read it again? I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And, and I think about that, how incredible it must have been to be Jesus and to know that he had so much more. Right? And, and there had to be a part of him that wanted to say, check this out. You think you were impressed with me feeding the multitude? Watch this. You know, you were impressed with me raising the dead? Watch this. 
if you thought that freaked you out, let me freak you really out. Right? So I want you just to hold a space that says, what if I don't even have a clue how much more God has for me? God would want to reveal to me. God would want to bless me with. And in my experience, many times, we're in this relationship with the divine where we say, I want more, I want more, I want more, but not that much more. Or I want to be blessed in this area, but only exactly how I think it should show up. And what if you were willing to access the level of God that Jesus accessed? What if you were willing to know God the way Jesus knew God? And what would it take to do that? Scripture says that the Holy Spirit will come and reveal all truth to us so that Jesus would teach for time what he could teach for those who had ears to hear, hearts that were open, and that the Holy Spirit would come for all of us to reveal that which was left to be fulfilled. And so in your life, can you imagine that there is a space where God still wants to reveal more godness to you if you were willing to receive it. Now, many of us grew up in religious situations where we taught that we had to almost beg or plead or beseech God to download the good stuff. You know, like we had to get ourselves worthy of the good stuff. That we could have kind of an adequate or semi-crummy life But anything more than about a semi-crummy life, somehow we had to be different to really be worthy of that level of a download, right? And really what what I've come to understand over and over again is that it's never God that denies us. It's we in our place of resistance, in our place of scaredness, put stops. So the real question becomes, how blessed would you be willing to be? And how do we access more to be more profoundly blessed? How many of you have ever heard what Unity teaches about affirmations? Like, you know what affirmations are, right? Positive statements of truth that claim spiritual truth and access them in our lives, right? There's this wonderful little book. Now, I didn't tell Julia about it beforehand, so she's going to give me a little bit of a lecture. But because she loves me, she'll forgive me anyway. But there's, there's this great little book called The Secret Code of Success. And one of the things that he talks about this is that he makes a point that the the way to access more good is not to make declarations, but to ask different questions. He makes the point that when you ask a question, your internal mechanism, your spirit, your mind, your personality, your ego, can't help but begin to answer it, right? And that everything in life, every problem, every challenge, everything that is a problem is just a question we haven't answered yet or a question that we don't really want to know the answer to. 
Have you ever had, have you ever, ever wanted to ask somebody a question, but you really didn't want to know the answer to the question? And it's like, okay, I'm just not even going to go there, right? And he makes a point that your spirit, your consciousness, your soul, your personality, your intellect can't help but answer questions. But if you ask a bad question, you can't help but get a bad answer. Right? Does that make sense? Now, so let's say your soul is asking the question, what's wrong with me? Anybody ever noticed that anybody's ever said that about themselves? Or, it, or you could change it if that one doesn't make sense. You could say, why am I always broke? Right? That's another bad question, right? Because you might come up with an answer. <laughs> Why is my family so idiotic, irritating? Pick your word, right? And, and what happens when we ask a bad question over and over again is the universe will give us an answer. And we actually begin to believe the answer even though it's not true. And so what we begin to access is very limited levels of good. Because we're asking bad questions, so we actually work on an answer. So we t make up a story. We make up a, an answer to a bad question that makes it look like it's right. So if, you, if your soul, if your personality is asking the question over and over again, what's wrong with me? Trust me, you'll come up with an answer. And if you don't, your family will. <laughs> right? But what if we began to change the questions that we ask that would actually begin to access the next level of the Holy Spirit in our life? What if we began to ask, what's the easiest way for me to be blessed? What's the, why is it so easy for me to be successful? Let's say that together, would you? Why is it so easy for me to be successful? Why is it so easy for me to have deep and profound loving relationships together? Why is it so easy for me to have deep and profound loving relationships now, can you imagine when you change the question, the answer has to change? And then, the, then your mind, your soul, your, your spirit, your essence begins to work on the, giving you the answer for what you really want, not for what you think you're supposed to find the answer to, to a problem that was never intended to be yours. What is the easiest way for me to create the level of abundance that I desire? How do I create the house and the life of my dreams? And I want you to see that simply by asking a different question, your soul begins to access God in a way that's different by just changing the question. So what, are you ready for your first homework assignment for tonight? I want you to make a list of the five most disempowering questions that you ask yourself on a regular basis. Right? Right? I want you to just pay attention to the thought process that's going on in your mind on a regular basis, and I want you just to become aware of the five most disempowering questions you ask over and over again. And, you know, it, it can be anything. Why do my kids behave this way? Or why does my boss treat me so poorly? You, you could ask, I want to know what the five most common disempowering questions that you're asking over and over again. Because I want you to see that, believe it or not, they are funneling your spirit down a path you don't want to go. 
So if you begin to just become aware of the five most disempowering questions you ask, then the next homework assignment, can you guess where I'm going? What would be five new empowering questions that would actually take you in the direction you would like to go in accessing more life, more God, more good in your life? Now, when you ask a question of the spirit of, of the infinite, of life, of God, the number one thing you have to assume is that it's going to be answered. That's also the good news and the bad news, right? So you're going to come up with an answer, right? So let's assume that the questions you ask are true. One of the examples he gives is somebody who was in, active in this ministry who wanted to sell their house, and they began to ask, how is the easiest way for me to sell my house at the right price to the right people? Because once they begin to ask that, can you feel the different higher levels of the Spirit that they begin to access? That God could begin to work on their behalf in a way because their mind was now receptive to actually getting an answer to that higher level of good. What would be the easiest way for me to have the job that I would love? And you get to decide on your five questions, the questions that would change and transform your life the most. You get to decide. But what I want you to see is that you were given access to the infinite. Paul said, now I see in the mirror dimly but one day I will see face to face. He said, I spoke like a child. I acted like a child. But one day I will see face to face. So what are some higher questions? Maybe some higher spiritual questions that you'd be willing to ask the universe. How do I know myself? Or what's the easiest way for me to express my, all my spiritual gifts? How do I live my complete oneness with God? How do I manifest the glory of God from moment to moment to moment? How do I live in higher and higher levels of ecstasy. Because you can keep asking the question, why doesn't my life work? And you can keep getting an answer for that question. But I don't think it's what you want. I really think that your soul wants more life. I think we all do. But if we don't change our questions, our questions keep taking us to some pretty dark places. As we change our questions, they actually allow us to completely access the glory of God. So what's one new question that you'd be willing to commit to that today you believe would access more of God's good in every area of your life. It can be small. It can be great. But I wanted you to go back to that idea that we have no idea how much good God has for us. But if we change the question, we could actually know that. What is the easiest way 
for me to access the divine in every area of my life. What is the greatest level of good I can know at every moment of every day? Because as you begin to put yourself to work, your mind, your heart, your soul to work, it will actually answer the question. Would you be willing to try? Can you see, and so help me with this one, can you see how you've asked bad questions before and gotten bad results from those questions. Does that make sense? Can you see ways that you've maybe even impacted your family, your family life, your relationships, because you were asking questions that were destructive? Can everybody see that? Can you see the way that it's impacted your work and your, fa- your prosperity? Because we were asking bad questions, and so the universe was actually assumed that we were smart enough to know what we wanted, right? And it was trying to reveal the negative to us, and it just got very distorted. Can you see that in your life? And can you also see that as you change the question, there's no limit to how much God you can begin to access? How do I access the divine? in every moment of my life? Wouldn't that be an interesting question to ask? Right? That there's no limit to what you have access to. Let's pray. And I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to the activity of God tonight. And God, I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more joy. I'm ready for more peace. I am ready for more. And I make a soul promise to myself that I'm ready to ask different questions. I'm not going to ask anymore why things are bad or broken or less than. I'm going to ask how they can be holy and great and loving and divine. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks that we are so wildly, wildly blessed. And God, we are interested how to magnify that in every area of our life. And so it is. Amen.
In your heart you never kept a secret grief An ugly shame You freely laughed and freely wept And taught me how to do the same Open eyes, open arms, open heart This is what I want to give This is how I'm going to live With open to start I'm gonna greet each dawn from today and never on with open eyes open arms open arms All right, you ready for a good night? Okay, tomorrow everybody be safe. All right, the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you, the power of God protects you. Okay, now let's stand, let's sing together our song of peace, and go have a great evening. Together, our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. God bless you all. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.